Hey, it's Sharon here from Quick Base Junkie coming to you from my home office. I wanted to share with you some videos directly out of my premium course called The Secrets of API Buttons for Quick Base. Now these videos are best practices and really they're best practices for almost any formula that you're using. So whether you use APIs or not, I thought it could be helpful. Welcome to Quick Base Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. But if you are interested in APIs, I do encourage you to check out my other videos here on YouTube um, where I've got lots of examples on how to use APIs in your QuickBase. And then to actually learn how to implement those APIs, you can check out my course called The Secrets of API Buttons for QuickBase. And you can get more information on that over on quickbasejunkie.com slash courses. Now check out the video. Now that we've covered the basics for building a URL formula button for APIs, we'll now dive into using variables. Variables allow you to organize your formulas and can make troubleshooting easier if you come across an error. A variable represents a piece of your formula that has been defined separate from the main formula and can be referenced using a short piece of text. Using variables can be broken down into two parts, defining the variable and calling the variable. The variable definition structure looks like this. There's a short piece of text VAR followed by the type and then the name with the equal sign followed by your formula and then a semicolon. Let's look at each of these parts. The type. The type here indicates the type of result that the formula has. In our case, the result will be text. For the name, you can assign any name you like so long as it has at least one character. However, it's only text, no numbers, no spaces, and no special characters. While not a requirement, I also prefer to make my variables all caps. This helps visually distinguish them from other items in my formula. It's also best practice to use descriptive words such as URL if the variable refers to a URL. Last is the formula. This will be the piece of your formula that you want to include as part of the variable. Now you always end this portion of your variable definition with a semicolon. Very, very important. It might drive you nuts trying to figure out what's wrong with your formula otherwise. Let me give you an example putting all of these together. So like it's mentioned in the variable structure, you start with the text VAR. This indicates to QuickBase that you're defining a variable. You follow that by the type of output that that formula will have. In our case, since we're doing a URL, it will always be text. Next, you give a name, for example, URL. This can be any name you choose, so long as it meets the requirements. And then you set that equal to the formula that you want that piece of text or the name to replace. And last, you're gonna follow it up with that semicolon. To use the section of code defined by your variable, you'll just need to reference the name you gave it preceded by a dollar sign, such as dollar sign URL. The order here does matter. You must have previously defined the variable in the same formula field before you can call that variable. Since we're talking about variables, let's talk a little bit about application variables. There's a different protocol when you are using application variables. App-level variables are defined in the variables section of the app settings. There you can define a variable that can be called in any formula field throughout your app. So if you find yourself entering the same string of text over and over again, an app variable may be a good alternative, especially if it might be something you later need to update in which case you'd only have to update one variable versus multiple formula variables wherever it's used. However, all app variables are text. No functions or field references are allowed. So when used in a formula, a conversion function may be needed, such as to date or to number, to convert that text to a date or a number. They're also called differently in a formula. 
They look just like field references or table aliases with the name enclosed in square brackets. They look just like this. We won't be using app variables in this course, but if you'd like more information on this type of variable, check out my how-to video on using application variables in QuickBase. In this section on using variables, we covered what variables are, how to define a formula variable, how to call a formula variable, and a little bit on app variables. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe using the link below. You can also drop me a comment and let me know what you thought and what you enjoyed the most. And then head over to quickbasejunkie.com to grab one of those free downloads. <laughs> Bye for now. Using the link below. Using the link below. Bye for now.